is a uh, it is a wonderful opportunity, but I take as much pride as, as training anybody else as I do, you know, because it, it, it's my job, it's my life, and I, I put everything into anybody that I work with. When young trainer Ben Davison first came to prominence in 2017, alongside a friend in Tyson Fury who was looking to make a comeback from the gravest depths of his career so far, Davison was met with a fair amount, or maybe an unfair amount, of scepticism, seemingly based on his youth, his style and manner, and perhaps a perceived lack of experience. What people didn't realise, perhaps, is that Davison had actually been around the sport of boxing for many years and had worked with many top-level boxers. I'm in the world, I'm with a builder and a, and a young kid, even though he's, a, he's good at his job, but how good can you be at 25-year-old? He's in, he's in deep water, he's been. You know, at the end of the day, let's see what he's made of. But I know what Tyson's made of. And as long as Ben can just keep him motivated, keep him switched on, it shouldn't be a problem. He needs to stay switched on. Having been successful in bringing Tyson Fury back from the brink, both in terms of his level of fitness, which was pretty poor, and maybe more importantly, the mental health struggles that we know Fury suffered with, Davison began to attract attention from other top fighters, including longtime friend Billy Joe Saunders, who he started working with more regularly. His rise in respect among the boxing community was perhaps best summed up when Josh Taylor, already a unified world champion, picked Ben Davison over Adam Booth when he decided to leave Shane McGuigan. Ben would ultimately take Taylor to undisputed glory against Jose Ramirez. And um, I've put 12 months of my life into, into Tyson and um, I'm just pleased that it, it showed out in the performance, but very disappointed that we didn't get the right decision. 12 months is not a training camp. 12 months is a changing camp. You had to undergo what is a, can be no less than a life effort, like to make a guy do something in his life that most people didn't think he was capable of after the fall he took. What made you think that you were the guy to take on this auspicious challenge? I didn't. I didn't approach Tyson. Tyson approached me, you know, and... Um... I told him what we needed. Um, I knew what he needed. And we gelled, you know, that's the most important thing. We gelled. Um, it's been a, a very tough but enjoyable journey. Um, and it's been one made for the movies, that's for sure. <laughs> now, Davison has always been notoriously cagey about his training philosophy and the methods employed in the Ben Davison Performance Centre out in Harlow, Essex. However, we've managed to glean some of the details of that philosophy through the video clips you're about to see. And you can't argue with success as many top fighters who've worked with Davison and alongside him have praised the young trainer effusively. Um, just but like mostly is this similar kind of style, you know, I've been, I've seen, obviously seen, working with him now a few weeks, but um, I'd seen a lot of clips of him training with uh, Billy Joe and Tyson, you know, the, the kind of style of pad work and training that they were doing with the feet work, defence, head movement and the fast combination punching, I believe suited my style to a T. Um, so as soon as I, I made contact and had a couple of sessions with him, I knew straight away which, which my decision was made, you know. Um, Adam Booth was a great coach as well, you know, when I went down there, there was a, there was, was a great week, he made me feel really welcome, the lads, him and the team, um, but there's just, I think, just too many fighters in the gym, so, um, but all the team made me feel real welcome all week, you know, we had a good laugh and all the lads in the gym made me feel real welcome, um, but I just had to go with my gut instinct and my first choice and uh, I think I've made the right choice. So, okay, we're talking about the art of boxing, hitting and not getting hit, okay? Yeah. If, I, if you was to put a fighter, a fighter A and fighter B in front of each other, each goal is to hit the other and not get hit first. What's the first thing they're going to do? They're not just going to go throw a punch and take a chance, 50-50, I might land it, I might not, I might get hit back, I might not. They're going to take a look at each other. What do they do to take a look at each other? How do they set the shots up? Those are the things that make a good performance. Um, so without getting into too much detail, basically it's the stuff besides the punching, what goes on 
before and after the punches. Those are the things that make a good performance because there's thousands of fighters out there that can throw every punch in the book, no? Yeah. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah, 100%. But what goes on before and after the punches is, is usually the difference between an okay fighter and a great fighter. Um, how they set those shots up, how they how they stay a step ahead of their opponent. Those are the things that make a great performance. I'm not I'm going over this in layman terms and not in great detail because obviously it's, I'm not going to give away my sort of philosophy. Yeah, yeah. But that's sort of what I was alluding to. And when it was funny because people were coming back with naming fights. As if Specific say, performances, yeah. This is a, a, no, that's what is a good performance, but what makes what a good performance. fed into it, yeah. Um... And I'd just really like to say that Ben Davidson is a fantastic trainer. A lot of people are giving him a stick for some of the things he said. But it's not the trainer in there in the ring on the night. It's the boxer. The trainer can only tell you what to do. And if you do it or not, it's your own business. That's it. So I, I never, ever blame the trainer. If I have a shit performance or whatever, it's not the trainer's fault. It's my fault. And that's it. That's all I'd like to say on it. I suppose people look at that though and say, but you left Ben Davison. But was that just because yeah, yeah. of a change in style? Yeah, change in style. I didn't, ben didn't do anything wrong to me. Like Ben had me slipping, sliding like a good one. I, I'd loved it. But for that specific fight, I knew I had to knock Wilder out. And for that, that defensive style wasn't going to work for me. So I needed an aggressive knockout coach. And it's, it's, it's common in boxing. If you need a different type of style, you change. That's what happened. I didn't leave Ben because he did something wrong. I left Ben because I needed a different style for a different opponent. You mentioned Eddie Hearn. Ben, Ben's style would actually work a treat on Dylan White. A lovely treat. Could you give him a call? <laughs> Get him back in? Yeah, I might do. Put the old team back together? Oh, I might do. I, might, I would love to do it. Love to, because I love to get that uh, reactions back and the slip and the slide, hands behind the back, all that job. That's what, that's what it's about, boxing, purest boxing. It's the coaching. It's the coaching. It's, it's um, Ben Davidson, who I believe is probably one of the best coaches in the world. You've got Lee Wiley there, and also you've got myself there. It's 100% the coaching. We coach them properly, you know. So, yeah, you know, I won't give too much away, but it's definitely the coaching. Uh, Ben's talked about this already, but there was a lot of criticism for him personally in the build-up to Wood against Conlon. A lot of it unfair, I think, but he said it didn't affect him too much. But what were you thinking kind of in the camp? Did you feel it was a bit unfair too? Listen... Ben's always getting a load of stick for what I don't know. It's Trey's the undisputed champion. Look at the job he's done with Lee Wood, you know. We didn't expect this from Lee Wood when he first came to us, you know. You know, and he, he's trained Tyson. He took, bought Tyson back for like 30 stone, got him to fight for the heavyweight title again, which that day he did win that, but he never got a decision. He's done amazing. I don't know why people are on his back all the time. He's British. He's one of us, you know. He should be... He should get knighted for what he's done. <laughs> oh, I'm being serious. He's took boxing to another level, you know. And I'm not this here saying that. It's proven. He's a proven coach. He's one of the best coaches in the world, if not the best. He just got trainer of the year, you know. I don't know why Peter won his case, but they need to give the man a rest and give him some praise. That's what I think. I really feel like it's helped me leaps and bounds. I feel so much more comfortable switched on and just smarter in the ring with with Ben's advice Ben's assistance him being around Robert Hodgins is still my main prime coach he's still there I just split it between both and then when I do go and train with Ben as well my my main coach Rob Clums as well so we can learn as a team as opposed to me just running off and doing one thing and then coming back and doing another what would you say and everyone knows by now that Ben's a world-class coach but what would you say he's added to you specifically so far reason he's given me a reason to do things whereas sometimes i'm very impulsive i'll I'll just do things because it 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 seems like that opportunity is there or it it just seems easy to do or her but he's given me reason and process um i think is the biggest thing for me so you he'll say you do this because you want this outcome and then when you get that outcome then you look for the next and the next and the next and he's taught me that it's not just about the the first combination, the first punch is about the fifth, the sixth, the seventh. It's what you're setting up for. It's never about now. It's always about later. Um, so there, there were some crucial things. And it just, everything he says, like, they're simple things to say and explain, but they all make so much sense. 
um they really click with me especially the way he delivers them so um yeah it's, it's been working really well ben would be the first to admit that he does not do all the crucial work on his own he's very much part of and the leader of a great team at the ben davison performance center veteran coach barry smith is there to offer help and advice while Lee Wiley, while being an assistant coach, is also an expert in the field of video analysis, pointing out the patterns and problems and even opportunities, both in terms of the footage of the fighters in the performance centre and their future opponents. Those two, Smith and Wiley, are integral parts of the team and Ben Davison readily credits them as such. Uh, we'll mix it up. Barry's got a few of his own fighters, but... Um... Barry will help us out sometimes, especially in the in the circuits and things like that um, that we'll do. Um, and then obviously Lee Wiley as well does a lot of the coaching with us. Um, sometimes Lee will do some coaching from the outside. I'll do some of the pad work. Sometimes there'll it'll just be a session focused on shadow boxing and talking about scenarios. Um, and then on days where um, you know it'll be more fitness based or Barrier help put them through their paces on, on the days that, that, that we need to. But Barry's got some of his own fighters as well, so um, sometimes he's busy with those. I'm very fortunate to have my camp and my team around me, which I think are ahead of a lot of gyms in the world, not just the UK, and how, how they work. And that's why I keep getting these wins um, when the bookers have had me a massive <laughs> underdog because of, of how they operate. And um, and Ben as well, he, he's relentless. He's so obsessed. Like, if he, he'll look at me, look at something I'm doing, it's not 100% right, he'll say, you can do this better. He'll try a different way of teaching me it. If that didn't work, he'll try a different way of teaching me it. Then he'll say, well, maybe relax or have this mindset and when you do drill this. You know, he's such a good coach um, and we, we just fit together really well. As well as Lee Wiley as well. And Barry, yes. Barry plays his part. The actual, <laughs> it's quite funny, so the actual sequence, you could say, um, when I knocked Conan out through the ropes, uh, that sequence alone. So there was a there was a an exchange in the middle of the ring, and then the gap opened up. Then there was a feint. There was a flicker upstairs to occupy the hands. And then there was my right hand that knocked him out. That sequence, the feint, the occupy, the right hand, that was drilled. Just that sequence alone was drilled, probably hundreds and hundreds of times over weeks and weeks and weeks. And it's, it's, honestly, it's it's surreal to see that footage. And then I've got videos of, of when I was doing it with Ben because he was obviously the video things to say, look, your foot was not quite right here. You need to make sure you're pushing him back there because I don't want to give too much away in case I find him again, but you know, yeah, the sure. game plan was to, to, to push him back into them situations where we knew make him more predictable. We knew what we're doing. It was more inefficient. And because he, that sequence there, he's predictable to do this old style hand thing where he tries to block with one hand, little occupy or bump. Um, it's, it is almost like cheating. That's what I feel like being this, uh, with being with Ben and, and having the insights and information that I'm given and the things that I drill, it's the closest thing to having a time machine and cheating. Because if if you can go back in time to see what happened, which you can't do, what you can do is look at previous footage and that's pretty much what you're going to expect because they do the same thing all the time. So sure. if you've got that information, why aren't you using it? You know they're going to do that. So all you need to do is that. Drill it and practice it because it's going to happen. It's going to present itself at some point in the fight. It is almost like having a time machine with the opposite way around. And I don't know why a lot of other gyms and trainers aren't, aren't doing it. But um, if you look at my last three fights, you know, it works. Yeah, so when I go back to the gym, we look at our previous fight. Um, but it is more so looking forward to who you're fighting. I'll get my scouting report off Lee, which can be anything from 30 minutes to 45 minutes long. And that'll pretty much have the bulk of it in, which we need to watch pretty much daily or every couple of days throughout the whole camp. And then we have other parts and sections off them bits is identified, which we can drill and practice as well. Um, I'm trying not to keep too much away, but you know, it is, it is ahead of a lot of other gyms. Um, I don't know what they're doing, but I know, like, from I've been at other gyms with world champions there, and, um, and I've been at, I've trained at other gyms with world champions there, and 
and not seen anything like this before and um, this is the biggest factor this is my biggest advantage it is perhaps strange that given all the work that Ben Davison had already done before the end of last year it was still met with some doubts and criticism in certain areas respected people included when Davison linked up with Anthony Joshua a pairing that had first been talked about and he'd even been asked about it a couple of years before Given Davison had achieved so much with top-level fighters, not least of which Lee Wood, who he took from a fighter losing at domestic level to probably the best in the world at his weight, uh, it was strange, as I say, that Ben Davison was questioned so much when the AJ pairing kicked off. But the results thus far have been pretty solid, if not spectacular, um, in the most recent iteration. It's not, it's not about... Uh, the likeness of, of me training AJ it is um, it's just a case of look it, they're the fighter they go out and source the information that they want um, if he was to ask me my opinion obviously I'm going to share my opinion like I said there I'm, I'd like to see him win that fight um, but you need it needs to be the whole package as well you can't have oh, so-and-so told me to go about the fight in this way, and so I'm going to go and train with that guy because I like the way he trains. Do you know what I mean? You need someone that's going to go, do you know what? This person has made me feel sure that this is the right way to go about the fight. They click the way they're working in the gym. Relationship is there, and, and everything needs to be correct for you to, to make the adjustments that you made, which he was able to do from the Ruiz fight. Uh, first fight going into the second fight so he made the right judgment calls there um, and the right changes there for him to be able to be successful there so let's just hope that he can do it again yeah but Ben's Ben's very good coach and having him will be an asset to Joshua definitely it just um, experience at championship level is, is a big thing you know and um, Ben's got that experience now so no, I think having Ben there, just to have, Ben seems to be a good strategist, you know, have a strategy, have a game plan, and that can only benefit Joshua. Um, I feel like he's happier. He, to, to be honest, he's always happy, but I feel like he's very content at the moment because he believes in what Ben Davidson is saying. He believes in the method. He believes in what uh, Ben Davidson is um, teaching him because, as you, as we saw in his last fight, everything that was taught to him, he performed and put it on show and it and the results were great for him. So I feel like he's walking around very confident and content. And you can see that he probably may not be thinking that, but um you can see that he's very busy that he's just a happy man at the moment. And you I as you know, as they say, a, a happy fighter is a dangerous fighter. So I believe age, age is gonna be dangerous tomorrow. In this fight you see AJ being a lot more decisive. Um, and that'll be down to, to what he's been doing in the gym and how clear it is what he needs to be doing. So he knows what he needs to do, which will make him a lot more decisive in doing it. While everything seems to be going well for Ben Davison, the coach himself realises that criticism is an unavoidable byproduct of any success in the boxing world. Uh, we wait to see what the future will hold for his partnership with Anthony Joshua and the future for Lee Wood and his other fighters in the performance centre. But if anything, Ben Davison seems to have convinced the vast majority of doubters that he is truly a world-class coach. And he's done this predominantly by staying ahead of the game and doing things his way. I just, I think that's part of, no matter what you do, I think that's part of life, part of, part of yeah, I wouldn't say part of boxing, it's part of life, no matter what you do. So, uh it's almost it almost was a bit of a a um it's just like a herd of sheep. Let me follow that, that was funny, let me follow that, that was funny, but uh yeah, I mean um yeah, let 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 the work speak for itself, innit? So I don't really mind about that. I think that no matter what you're gonna have critics, so um but at the same time, there's a lot of a lot of support. You know, I get a lot of people that that talk really well, and uh, a lot of fighters that want to come work. And um, 
a lot of fighters will ask for advice and I think that he's probably that will that obviously means more than you know, a quality fighter wanting to come through the door means more than someone on Twitter saying trying to make a joke and thinking it's funny, so yeah. I don't really maybe at a certain point is don't really sit there's nowhere near as much as that now, but it's something new, isn't it? When someone new comes on the scene, I think there's always a little bit of um scepticism and all the rest of it. So and I think the fact that we take a slightly different approach to to the to the uh boxing coaching side of things, you know, it's, it probably doesn't go down well. I think <laughs> new things, new ideas never really do, do they? I think there's things that, that other coaches and fighters might see and go, you know, there's good fighters that come in here, quality fighters that will come down for sparring and they will openly say, I'll try to watch everything I can and see and pick up, you know, certain things that we don't put out. I don't put out loads of coaching stuff. I'll put some stuff on YouTube that people can see and sometimes I watch them and think, you know, might have said a little bit too much there or, you know, I might put something out and I think people probably can't recognise what I mean in that situation. Um, but yeah, I definitely see fighters and when they come down and they want to talk and I'm more than happy to always explain or sometimes sparring partners will come without a coach and I'll say, look, this is happening because of that, maybe you should try this and not in a way of, that'll be good for my fighter, do you know what I mean? <laughs> but in a sense of, if you can figure out what my fighter's doing, my fighter's now got to have another approach. He's got to make an adjustment. I, I want to see that. So, yes, it, it's good. And, uh, you know, it's, it's my passion. I enjoy helping people get better. And especially when um, I can see that they want to get better. So, yeah.